Hello my soccer universe! Boy was it a weekend in Germany, a little bit in Austria too, lots of changes there, so yeah, we'll talk about that. I am of course wearing Stuttgart, because Stuttgart was pro provided the main headline. Main headline also, my wife got on my hair, she says I need to look nicer, so there you go, hope you like it. <laughs> um, what I Let's, what were the headlines? Well, I mean, the big one is that Stuttgart completely destroys Dortmund and causes Lucien Favre to be sacked. That's the big one. Another one, Kern gets a big point in the relegation battle. Um, then Bayern only draws, gets a somewhat lucky draw at Union Berlin. And of course, Leverkusen, we have a new wins in claims the lead in the Bundesliga and we also have a new leader again new old leader in Austria but I think the big headline is that Rapid loses to Lowly Swarovski Tirol kind of big and I think they're entering a little bit crisis mode there too so let's go through the games uh, it had a very interesting Wolfsburg Frankfurt matchup to start uh, of the weekend a matchup that was largely dominated by Wolfsburg, a little bit against the run, run of play and with a penalty that the referee didn't initially give, but then VAR inter intervened. But those that are 63rd, it is 1 0 for Frankfurt at a time where, um, honestly, uh, Wolfsburg should have led by probably one, if not two goals. Um, Wout Weghorst then settles the game uh, with another penalty penalty and he even gets the win in the 88th minute after a nice Schlager assist. Uh, totally deserved win for Wolfsburg who are having a pretty strong season um, so far if we look at it they had they're picking it up. Uh, then I actually watched a um, conference where they switched between games on Saturday, which was quite entertaining. And uh, Gladbach Berlin, uh, Hertha was actually for a long time the better team there. Um, and took a, when the Guendouzi uh, gave them the lead in the 47th, that was well deserved. Hertha should have probably led even at the half. And it was then when player Thuram and Leiner come on that the game of Gladbach gets a little bit more dominant, a little bit more what we used from a Marco Rose team and Brel Emberlof finally I, I, I will say gets a really nicely taken goal and then Klapper was impressing for the win but I honestly I have to say this would have been a little bit too much because Hertha thoroughly deserved the point there and then we already at Dortmund Stuttgart when Wamangituka I still have to struggle with it. And I, I apologize, he scored this crazy goal in Bremen last um, weekend where he basically takes the ball and waits and waits and waits and waits until someone comes and puts it in, seemingly not, not knowing where, where they will be count, which caused a lot of uh, uproar. I think after what he did uh, this weekend, everyone is only praising him. He scores a penalty at 26 when Stuttgart should have been up by two goals already. They were that dominant. Stortmund, very less fair, not, you know, a little bit uh, nose high, you know, we are the better team, blah, blah, blah. not very concentrated, very lax. And Stuttgart is there with the, uh, the pressing, uh, quickly hits his he hits on the card to counter attack and therefore can uh, score the goals, uh, maybe could not score, got in the first half, because as I said, they should have been up by two goals at least at the half. However, from the only real chance by Dortmund, uh, Gio Reyna, a great assist by Guerrero, but then the way uh, Reyna converts it, uh, I think he um, takes it down with his left and then with the outside of his right, the rifle puts it in the net, a wonderful goal. And you think, ooh, this will hurt Stuttgart. Everything but everything but uh, Dortmund continues to be sloppy playing out loses the ball it goes to Van Gala who plays it in for Waman Gituka who is standing there that doesn't even hit the ball right but it is 2-1 and then it goes bang 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 Philipp Forster, Forster makes it in the 60th Koulibaly in the 63rd it's 4-1 then there's a uh, lay down a goal by Dortmund disallowed in the 87th where you might have had Maybe they, they will get some, something back, but at that point Stuttgart had already hit the post again and they make it a proper route uh, through a Gonzalez goal in the 91st minute. 
This was Dortmund at the worst. And I mean, when Marco Reus in an interview afterwards said, yeah, we are not a team that defends very well. And if we cannot press high and get the ball high, we have trouble. And this is the third home defeat of Dortmund in a row. The first one against Bayern, we, we, can, for, uh, we, we can forgive. But against Köln was already a so-and-so. And what they showed the show against Stuttgart, this was absolutely catastrophic. This was... If Stuttgart would have scored 10, it would have been a deserved win. This was dead dominant by Stuttgart. Stuttgart outclassed Dortmund on every account. And yes, they don't have Haaland uh, in the front, but they have so many, so many highly talented players that I actually can somewhat understand that they uh, let the coach go. The problem is they don't have someone lined up, so the co is taking over, which might have worked for Bayern. I'm not sure if this will work for Dortmund, to be very honest with you. I think they will do in the winter break uh, some soul searching and trying to get a coach. I mean, it is, of course, rumored that Nagelsmann and Rose, I don't think that either Gladbach or Leipzig will let those go. And then you really have to look hard. Uh, other rumor was Jesse Marsh from Salzburg. Yeah, please take him. I won't mind there as well. But yeah, absolute. Dortmund is a disaster. Uh, pretty much because the expectations were really high. And they're not living up to it. And maybe the team is just too young. Talented, but very, very young. Um, Freiburg, an important 2 0 win over, over Bielefeld. This is also one of the relegation strugglers. But the big one was, of course, Mainz against Köln. First of all, Köln in those nice yellow uh, with uh, red and green jer jerseys. Köln was most of the time the better team, had a goal. This is allowed. Gets in the goals of Rechbechai, who already scored the two, I think, in uh, Dortmund. So yeah, uh, he uh, taking very well deserved uh, lead there. Mines comes up late, had chances, and I think especially at 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 the end, Timo Horn needed to come up with two big saves. It also didn't help the Andre Duda, who was really great for current throughout the game, get senses and sent off for a rather stupid uh, second yellow card. I think he got those two within a minute, and you know that doesn't sound very professional to be honest so yeah uh very very little on mines could have equalized but i think it was absolutely deserved uh the win for Köln. uh we don't need to talk much about leipzig bremen because Le leipzig gets the two two goals and that was the game we should talk about union against bayern although i did not see much but union in the first half they only led by one goal could have been two that the chance the chances were there i mean Premier gives them a very early lead they have a huge chance uh midway through the first half to where uh, the striker does everything right, just puts it wide. Yes, Bayern was there, Bayern was coming. Second half, Bayern really had chances uh, to probably win it even. Um, and Lewandowski gets the equalizer after a common assist. But to be honest, I think this was a fully deserved draw by Union Berlin. And Union Berlin really being one of the surprises this season, uh, having a pretty good showing. Schalke, I think, had a lead even at Augsburg, where Kenneth Kenneth Hong at least they pick up a point, which has been, uh, has been a while. And then Leverkusen against Hoffenheim, the two Europa League uh, starters for Germany. Uh, Hoffenheim was not that out of the game. I mean, yes, Leon Bailey gets an early goal and makes a beautiful second goal. Um, but early in the second half, I think it was all for the first 10 to 10 minutes, it was all Hoffenheim, and they only get uh, one, one goal through Baumgartner. When Wirtz in the 55th kind of makes it uh, 3 1, you think the game is decided. It really took then a uh, decision when Grilic is sent off uh, with a second yellow, which honestly that was not a foul, but the uh, VAR cannot intervene there. And then a little bit later, another Austrian, Stefan Posch, for a handball. That, that was clear when says is sent off. So, and though with two men down, it was rather easy for uh, Leverkusen to play at home, and Alario converts a penalty in the 91st for one win there. So, in the table now, we have a new leader, Leverkusen. Yes, I probably need a Leverkusen shirt, but you know, as a current fan, should I get a Leverkusen shirt? Probably I need to. I, uh, same thing goes for Wolfsburg. I still hold out on Leipzig. I'm still holding out on Leipzig, but Wolfsburg and Leverkusen, I think I can 
imagine. Um, as, as we can see, Bayern are now at the 70% that they were at the beginning of the season, but they are for the first time in a few weeks not at 100% for making the Champions League. And Leverkusen and Leipzig seem to be set to join them. Dortmund's still there, but their stock is dropping fast. And look, look, look at the championship percentage. It's only 3%. That was a whole lot higher not too long ago. Gladbach still favored uh, at least to make it in the Euro Euro Europa League, but Stuttgart and Union Berlin are pesky there. And if you look on the bottom, yes, Köln gets a little bit of cushion, uh, especially head of Mainz, already five ahead, ahead of Mainz. And so, yeah, it's Bielefeld, Mainz and Schalke who really look to be set to go down. We have two rounds in the upcoming come, come week and I want to present both the rounds because I'm not sure if I will be able to do a roundup video of the mid midweek round because I'm not sure how much I will see. It starts with a tasty Frankfurt Gladbach tie, although Frankfurt is, you know, they have many, many draws and now they, they had a loss. They would be a team that is way more tad talented than uh, well, what is results are showing by Gladbach also. It's not that great. Uh, Stuttgart only on so is probably a very, very interesting one because both teams are performing really well at the moment. Can someone move on further? Uh, Bremen Dortmund. Uh, sounds like a big one. Bremen has been doing damage to Dor Dortmund in Bremen. So let's see that. Um, Bayern Wolfsburg, I really want to see if Wolfsburg can continue there. I think they've only lost one so far. And then we have a Rhine Derby between Cologne and Leverkusen. I mean, Leverkusen more or less a suburb of Cologne. So that's interesting. And Hoffenheim, Leier, Leipzig. There are quite some ties in there in the midweek. However, there's the big one is on uh, Saturday late between Leverkusen and Bayern. Um, other matchups there are uh, Union Dortmund on Friday, also at Gladbach Hoffenheim. That uh, is a big one. And I think Wolfsburg Stu uh, Stuttgart is a little bit of a sleeper in that pack as well. Austria, oh, Sturm Graz continues their great form. They are flying at the moment. I think they've only lost once to Lusk. Um, and they look dangerous. They beat Admira 3 0, but the result. Uh, of the weekend, although there was the big top of the table clash, is definitely Rapid losing 3 0 to lowly Wattens. Rapid absolutely has to be said uh, a disgrace. They already in Europa League now are showing that, and then within 30 minutes, they're 2 0 down. Fortunately for them, there are still no spectators. They go even man down in the 4 for night and late on it's 3 0. Thoroughly deserved for Tirol. Uh, Wolfsburg against Austria Wien was a whole lot more interesting because uh, Austria Wien um, took the lead, then they could equalize, and it really took a uh, um, last stoppage time penalty for Wolfsburg to get, get them into top their perfect week. Something at last cannot uh, say. They played really well in the first half in Salzburg. They actually controlled the game, pressed Salzburg in, had the high line. Uh, the problem was that I thought they will A, not be able to hold up the game and they got a really beautifully played goal by Eggestein where the ball comes from Renner uh, from the right to the left side and going at him. Uh, really skin, uh, the ball gets Soboschlei completely out of position. The highly talented Soboschlei. Uh, he falls down going and pulls pull, 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 pull across where Eggestein, although there is the defender there, gets to the ball and pulls pull, pull it right in the corner. I mean, a, a gem of a goal. However, I saw it already. They probably cannot keep this up and Salzburg will come out storming probably. And that's exactly what happened. And Salzburg is the more talented team, I'm afraid to say. Um, and yeah, you could have waited the storm, but you know, Patson Daka gets the equalizer and then a stupid goalkeeper, a stupid mistake. You have the ball, Wiesinger plays it to Schlager. Schlager is pressed high by two, two players. Plays it out directly to Berisha, who puts it in, in, into the net, and that settled the game almost. Lask had chances. I mean, and I uh, have to say, before this 2-1, uh, Lask had the first chance to go again. It was a pretty good, good one where he, he, they could have taken the lead again, and then uh, right uh, you get the other. Uh, game then died down. Lask came up, tried to do a few things. It was not really, really that threatening, but when they were pushing forward to get the equalizer from Vipu from a counter I mean, he runs straight through to goal and makes it 3-1 for Salzburg. Uh, so yeah, I think 
a draw would have been a just, just result, but I was prepared that Salzburg will win, and the way the, the game went, I saw it more that Salzburg will win that one. Um, in the table now, of course, Salzburg is back on top. Uh, Lask still second, but Sturm Graz, they have a game less against Wolfsburg, which is not a foregone con con conclusion, but if they would win that, then Sturm would be in uh, first place. And we see we have now the first uh, half of the regular season is completed. Rapid only drops, do uh, drops down now in fourth, and there's a lot of changes up on top, and it's always one, two, three, four, five, six have changed. And also on the bottom were quite some, some movements. We have Admira Beck, who just beat Salzburg, back in last place again. And the Austrian League at the moment is of the eight that I'm looking at the one with the most goals. Midweek, we have some four cup games come, come up. Starts with Kapfenberg against Blau Weiss Linz, uh, then Wolfsburg against Amstetten, and then Lask against Elektra. The I think the, I don't know about Kaffenberg and uh, blau -Weiss, but Wolfsburg and Lask should be clearly favored there. And then the big one, uh, Salzburg against Rapid, Salzburg will steamroll them. And then we have one last round, which is basically the first round again. Um, the big name matchup, honestly, is Salzburg against Wolfsburg, but of course uh, austria Wien against Lask, that's a classic Austrian. Bundesliga duel, so that probably takes some precedence there. So yeah, that's what is from the German-speaking world, so Switzerland. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, drop a line below what you thought about the games uh, this weekend, give me a thumbs up if you, uh, if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.